welcome participants to the new topic in this particular week. So, last class we have done the revision of weft knitting. Now, we are switching to new type of knitting technology which is called warp knitting. So, today is in this particular lecture we are going to introduce you what do you mean by warp knitting. I will show you many fabric samples. I will also try to in show you the application potential of warp knitted structures and also we will try to focus more on the structural aspects what exactly is happening in the warp knitted structures because the fundamental of any structure in textile is you need to first analyze the structure carefully and then go for technologies. So, again this uh, lecture is all about trying to realize the network of yarn in a warp knitted structure as we started in weft knitting also we started with the loop intermeshing similarly here also I am going to show you the warp knitting structures and their potential applications and their technical aspects. So, let us move on to warp knitting technologies. What do you mean by warp knitting? So, in one of the week especially in week number 1 I given you a very small hint of comparing two type of knitting technologies which was weft knitting and warp knitting. So, in weft knitting we have done so many lectures so far where the yarn is moving from left to right, right or right to left. So, this movement of yarn is along the fabric width or which usually in woven fabric technologies we call fabric width as a weft direction. So, that is why this type of knitting is called weft knitting where the yarn is moving along the fabric width. Now, a new type of a structure which is quite popular in knitting is warp knitted structure. So, in warp knitted structure the loops does not looks like a stable loops just like you are seeing in weft knitting they rather has different network of loop intermeshings. They are also created by loops, but the architecture of loop in the structure is different than weft knitting. In weft knitting you have seen the loop is intermeshed by upper loop and bottom loop and these loops are actually connected with left and right loop in the same course. But in case of a warp knitted structures if you carefully see any particular loop or if you try to see the follow the path of a yarn it does not move along the width direction rather it moves along the length direction. For example, if you see the black color if you try to follow the paths the yarn is actually following or moving towards the length direction. So, yarn movement is along fabric length and in woven technologies usually length indicates the warp direction. So, that is why this type of knitting is called warp knitting. Warp knit structure and weft knit structures you can easily visualize by looking the structure itself. So, in a warp knit structures the loop architecture is slightly disturbed slightly disturbed in the sense you can see here first of all the loop is not standing vertical or symmetric just like in case of weft knitting. So, in warp knitting loop is either tilted right or tilted left. The intermeshing is there each loop is intermeshed by top loop and bottom loop if you see any particular loop inside the structure each loop is intermeshed at the top point and bottom point. The only difference here is each loop is not connected with the loops in the same course rather it is connected with the loops of alternating courses. For example, if you see the loops in weft knitted the sinker loop is connecting each loop with the left loop and right loop, but here in warp knitted structure a loop is connected in different courses. For example, this particular loop is connected with the loop of next course 
and also loop of previous course. So, the loop is not connected in the same course, rather they are connected with the previous course and next course. Because of that, the sinker part of the loop or the legs of the loop are following on the same side. Due to this, the symmetric of the loop is getting disturbed and you are not getting a symmetric stable loops, rather you are getting a unstable loop. Either it is bent on the left side or right side. So, this is the beauty of a warp knitted structures. So, the core line for you at this moment is to, to realize or differentiate these two type of structures. In one structure, yarn is moving from left to right or right to left, that is why it is called weft knitting. In other structure, in which the yarn is moving along the length direction and loop is connected with previous course and next course. So, that type of structure is called warp knit structures. So, for next 3 to 4 weeks, we will be focusing mainly on warp knitted structures. Let us try to get more understanding of the loop network in a warp knitted structure. I have many samples of warp knitted fabrics with me. I am going to show you those fabric samples, but before I show you the actual fabric sample, let us visualize the loop or network in a warp knitted structures. So, this is a simple warp knit structures. I have this structure with me right now. Let me show you first the structures and then I am going to describe what exactly happening in this structures. So, one simple structure is with me. If you see this structures, somehow uh, it will be very difficult for you to understand at this moment. If you try to see this structures, each loop is connected with bottom course and top course. At this moment, we you would be not be able to visualize carefully, but uh, somehow I have given some marker inside the fabric structures for you to understand. So, so you can see um, this yarn is actually held by one of the loops. So, this is the loop in one course by one needle. You can easily see this loop is not connected in the same course. So, the middle loop which I am pointing is not connected with the left loop. So, you can see here actually there are, there are three loops which is visible in this video. So, the middle loop is actually not connected with left loop or right loop. Rather, the middle loop is connected with the loop of previous course and next course. So, the previous course means if you, if you are following this particular loop, it is connected somewhere here, it is some, somewhere here and it is connected somewhere at this point, just in the next course. So, so the bottom line is the connection of the loop, especially the sinker part of the loop is not in the same course rather the sinker part of each loop is moving to the two courses. So, the left sinker and right sinker. So, the feet of each loop in a warp knitted structures are not remaining in the same course. So, that is the bottom line. If you see otherwise uh, this fabric, uh, I, sh I have shown you the fabric, the zoom version. But in reality, you would not be able to uh, understand anything if you if you not enlarge the fabric structure. So, uh, I will show you the with the help of schematic, I will try to explain how the yarn is moving in these structures. Um, otherwise, uh, if you see a weft knitted structures, the structure is very, very simple and uh, and you can see the sinker loops are connected in the same course. So, the sinker loops are connected in the same course. This is a rib structure. So, you can see these two structures has completely different nature of yarn movement. So, in one of the structures, you would not be able to find out 
the yarn movement like this. Rather, in the warp knitted structures, the yarn is moving actually vertically. So you cannot take out the yarn so easily. Uh, I have some structures where you can actually take the yarn from the length direction, but uh, at this moment, uh, I would try to show you that you just understand how these two structures are different in terms of yarn movement. So here the yarn is moving along the course and one yarn is sufficient to make this fabrics, but in especially in this type of fabric structures, so you can see each loop of the same course is created by different yarn. So naturally to create this type of structures, a warp knitted structures, we need more than one yarn, we need multiple yarn ends. So uh, we need a warp beam to create this type of structures. I have one structures where I can show you how the yarn is actually moving along the length directions. So uh, I have this structure with me where you can actually uh, see the yarn movement. So uh, in the length direction. So let me let me pull the yarn for you. So actually so if you see this fabric, this is fabric length direction and this is fabric width direction. This is another uh, warp knitted structures and let me show you the movement of yarn along length direction. by pulling it. So I am pulling one of the yarn end and you can see it is definitely created so yarn is actually moving in length directions. So you can see it here, I am pulling the yarn and the loops is getting off, open up. This is another type of warp knitted structures, but the idea is here the yarn is actually moving in length direction. This is the yarn which I am, which I am holding by hand. So you can see it here, so this is the yarn. I am I am opening the fabrics, so I am just pulling it, you can open the entire fabric. Please remember this is just a special warp knitted structures where I can split the fabric, but in most of the warp knitted structure it is difficult to take out the yarn from the length direction because they are knotted in such a way. So uh, this is how a warp knitted structure is different from weft knitted structures. So this is the simplest one where uh, you can able to visualize what is exactly happening with the yarn movement. So this is the warp knitted structure. If you carefully see the warp knitted structures here you have four columns A, B, C, D and each column we call it veils similar to weft knitting and each veil is created by one needle. So if you are looking at A column, this is created by A needle. If you are ne looking at B column, it is created by B needle. If you are looking at C column, it is created by C needle. And if you are looking at D column, it is created by D needle. And again the courses, first courses, second courses, third courses, fourth courses, fifth courses. So this is the five courses, four columns. First courses, it is uh, not visible to see whether it is coming out or going inside. Again, the definition of technical back and technical front will still be valid. If you carefully see each of these loops, it is being formed at the back side of old loop. So that's why all the loops here is technical back side. So again, the basic uh, understanding of web knitted structures uh, will be actually helping you to analyze warp knitted structure as well. Now let us try to focus on the movement of each yarn. So 
I have shown you just now in a weft knitted structure the same yarn is connected with all the loops if you are making the weft knitted structure by single yarn. But here if you try to follow the yarn path you will realize not all the loops are created by same yarn. So definitely you need multiple yarns. So here 1 to 5 is the courses, A to D is the needles. Let us try to see the loops which is created by C needle. So in C needle, the C needle is loops for 5 courses, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So each loop is created by C needle when a yarn is fit to that particular needle. So in 5 courses, if you try to follow the first loop which is created by C, so this is the first loop which is created by C and if I want to know what is the yarn which is provided to C needle. So let us suppose if this loop is provided by Y1 yarn, I am naming the yarn as Y1, Y2. In the second course, if you see this is the second course, if you try to see this particular loop, definitely this loop is not being formed by the same yarn. So in the second course, the same needle is catching different yarn which is Y2. In the third course, if you see this is third course, this is the loop which is created by C needle. So when this loop is created, um, the yarn which is being caught by C needle is actually again Y1, this is Y1 because if you carefully see alternatingly, if you follow the sequence, you will realize the C needle is catching different yarns in alternating courses. So first courses it is catching 1, third courses again it is catching Y1, fifth course again it is catching Y1 and in even number it is catching Y2 yarns. So there are actually two yarns, two different yarns are feed to the same needle. Okay? This is different in case of wave knitted structure. If you look at the normal wave knitted structure, same yarn will be provided to each needle in each courses. So this is how a warp knitted structure is different than a weft knitted structure. Now let us see the movement of each yarn. So if you want to see the movement of this black yarn, if you, you can easily see it, it is switching from C column to B column. So if you see the movement of Y1 yarn, it is switching from C needle to B needle. So in the first course, it is with C, need, C needle. In second course, it is with B needle. In third course, it is again with C needle. In fourth course, it is again with B needle. Then in fifth course, it is again with C needle. So if you follow the path of yarn, between C and B and if you follow the path of black yarn which I noted at Y1, it is moving from C to B and B to C in alternating courses. So not only needle is catching different yarns in different courses but also each yarn is moving to different needles in alternating courses. So this is the core principle of loop formation in a warp knitted structures and this is how this structure is different from a weft knitted structures and if you see the path of the yarn, it is naturally with the course it is moving towards the length direction. So that is why this type of structure is called warp knitted structures. I have shown you um, the fabric sample also, how the yarn was moving in the length direction and although the picture was not clear but this uh, schematic will be helpful for you to understand a warp knitted structure. Now who is actually helping this yarn to switch from one needle to other needle or who is providing yarn to each needle? So for formation of any warp knitted structure, there comes a different element in a warp knitting machine which is called yarn guide. So it is the guide 
which provides yarn to each individual needle. So, a guide actually provides yarn to each needle in the loop formation. So, you can see this is the needle and for each needle there is one guide which is providing yarn to that needle. So, this is not the case with the weft knitted structures because the carriage itself was carrying one feeder and, and that feeder was providing yarn to all the needles. But here for each needle, you can see for each needle you have different guides. So, one guide for each needle for providing yarn into loop formation. So, this is how the, the principle of loop formation is also different in case of a warp knit structure compared to a weft knit structure. So, yarn guide become a very key element in warp knitting productions. Not only the needle, but the yarn guide is extremely important which I will cover in the next class also. How important is the role of yarn guide in providing the yarn? Because you have seen each yarn is sifting needles in alternating courses. So, that is only possible if the movement of each yarn is controlled. So, here each yarn is controlled with a guide and that guide can be switched from one needle to other needle in alternating courses. So, this is how the principle of loops which is being formed um, in the warp knitted structure. More depth clarification on the machine as well as in the fabric I will be covering in few subsequent slides. Uh, as well also in few lectures. So, please hold on that, um, but at this moment just try to understand the structural difference which is you, which you can observe in a weft knitted structure and warp knitted structures. If you try to extend the fabrics, you can clearly see uh, because of the geometry of the loop inside the structure, the fabric will not be extensible. If you have any warp knitted structure and weft knitted structure in your hand, you try to extend the fabric, you will realize warp knitted structure it will be very rigid not so much extensible because both the legs are on the same side. So, because of that the loops could not be open up. So, due to which uh, in terms of fabric properties also these two structures will be different. Now, let us try to see the application potential of warp knitted. So, similar to weft knitting, warp knitting also has a very unique potential in the applications. Uh, the first application is sew. Sew knitting uh, both weft knitted as well as warp knitted structures are used. There are lot of companies uh, around the world they are making shoe uppers using warp knitting technologies because it gives you very beautiful design of mesh fabrics uh, which you can generate and that looks aesthetically good as a sew uppers. Uh, mosquito net uh, is widely popular. Um, in many countries, in especially in Asian countries for uh, preventing uh, babies from uh, uh, mosquitoes and this type of also structure is actually a warp knitted structures and you can see it is a messy structure. So, the, the pores porosity is very good, you can control the porosity uh, and that is why warp knitted structures is very useful in these type of applications. Um, in composites also we can create a warp knitted structures and uh, we can put resin inside and we can make very stable composites which can be used for wind turbines and other composites applications. Also we used uh, warp knitted structure in geotextile and civil applications for fencing. So, if some construction is going on and if you want to protect it from one side, so you can simply hang a mesh fabric, those type of fabrics is also again a warp knit fabrics. Uh, warp knit fabrics more advanced versions is used in um, car seats also where uh, this is a special fabrics, we call this uh, in the market 3D special fabrics. Again a warp knitted structure, very good cushioning effect and uh, this is again made by warp knitting technology. Uh, in Tensile structures also, um, we use warp knitted structures very uh, rigid, very stable and uh, we can create um, this 3D network of structures using warp knitting technologies. This is also very popular nowadays. Apart from these technical applications, warp knitted structure is also used for garmenting 
uh, for creating very fancy designs on the garments. But weft knitted is not naturally the first preference because of its characteristics. But nowadays, swap knitted is also being used uh, extensively in garment purpose. So this is the overall application of swap knitted structures uh, in real life. There are n number of applications are there. Uh, probably in the last week, I will try to cover um, some unique aspects of swap knit uh, applications. Uh, where you will see how these structures can be used for many technical applications. The other beautiful application is in medical, where for hernia mesh, for uh, mesh fabrics, uh, we use warp knit structures, very highly stable, porous. So this type of structure is also a warp knitted structure. Uh, in warp knitting also, just like uh, in uh, a weft knitting, Warp knitting structure also, there are very complicated structures can be designed and in next three to four weeks, we are going to cover these type of complicated structures. Similarly, in weft knitting, we have seen cable, arun, we have seen bulging, we have seen rib designs, we have seen jacquard design. Similarly, here also, uh, we can create many type of structures and these structures can be classified into one bar structures, two bar structures. Uh, multi body structures, 3D structures um, that I will be slowly unfolding you and try to, trying to explain these type of structures. Uh, at this moment, I have a few unique structures with me and hopefully in, in coming weeks, I will be trying to explain all of these structures and their technologies. So let me show you some of these structures. This is the structure I just showed you. So here one structures and uh, the other structures you can see it here. Okay, and the third structures which uh, is very useful is again for mesh fabric. This is also used in mosquito nets. This is uh, a mosquito net fabric. We also have uh, in supermarkets, you might have seen this type of uh, mesh fabrics where you keep onions and potatoes. So this is again uh, a mesh fabric very bigger mesh size. So you can see the mesh size is much, much bigger. You can again have very unique structure with me. So you can see it here. So again, here you can see the mesh size is also different and also density of the loops are also different. And we can also go for much, much higher fab mesh size depending on uh, the application. So usually you can see here the porosity of the fabric can be controlled. So you can see there are two fabrics I am showing you. So in one fabric your mesh size is bigger and in other fabric you can see the mesh size is very, very smaller which you cannot even able to look at. So, so the structural capability of warp knit structure is also tremendous and again it will depends on the engineer uh, capability. So this is, you can see everywhere this, has different varieties, different colors. So these are the structures which I am going to cover in the class and uh, you will have more understanding on warp knitting technologies. So um, let's see again the principle of uh, warp knit structure. So these are the complicated structure which I'm going to cover it. Again, um, I already mentioned you for making a warp knitted structure, the role of guide is very, very important because each guide is providing yarn to each needle and these guide bars actually shift position in alternating courses to provide yarn to different needles in alternating courses. So this is how you create these type of loops in a warp knitted structures. So again, um, if you want more detailed descriptions, uh, I can show you here. So there, here there are four needles, N1, N2, N3, N4, and there are other needles in the same machine. So if you want to create the first course, so this is your first course. So imagine there are four guides which are providing yarns to these needles. 
and you created four loops. So, so these are guide number one, guide number two, guide number three, and guide number four. So just now I showed you the uh, semantic of guides and needle. So each guides are providing yarn to the needle and needle are making loop out of it. So for example, needle N1, guide number one is providing the yarn. Needle N2, guide number two is providing the yarn. N3, guide number three, and four, guide number four. So this, you create these four loops here, okay? So this is the first course. Now, what about next course? So when this course is done, you are moving to next course. So in the next course, what exactly is happening? Because you can see once the guide one um, provides yarn to needle one, the same guide is not available with N1 in the next course. Or if you see needle number two, guide number two is providing yarn here. But in the second course, which is in this particular course, so this loop, the guide which is carrying this yarn is actually G1. So, so after first course, each of these guide is shifting its position one pitch towards right. So G1 is now providing yarn to N2, G2 is providing yarn to N3, G3 to N4, G5 to N5. And so this is how the guide bar is shifting. So the guide bar actually change its position in second course. Again, if you go to third course, it is similar to the first course. So again, this guide bar go back to its original position. So this G1 is now providing yarn to needle number one. G2 is now providing yarn to needle number two. G3 to G3. So this is how you provide the needle. And if you see for fourth course, again, you are providing this guide bar is shifting position. So it is the guide which is very, very important. Needles remains stationary. Needles will just make the loops if any yarn is provided to it. So in every course, the guide is changed. So that's why the yarn is changed for that particular needle. So that's why in the same column, you are making loops from different yarns. Because if you follow the same needle, first course G2, second course G1, again third course G2, fourth course G1. So, so this is how you can for each needle, guides are changed, yarns are changed. So that's why in the same column, different loops has been created. And guide bar is shifting the position. So needle and guide become a key element in the formation of the fabric. Most of the warp knitted structure, in fact, all of the warp knitted structures, what is more important for you is to understand the movement of this guide bar. So if you understand the movement of guide bars, the structures become very, very easy for you. So some of the structure capability I'm going to show you, uh, which is nothing but very, very easy. So if the guide bar is shifting position from only to the alternating needles, then you create this type of structures where you can see it is the guide bar is shifting position from next needle. So when the guide bar is shifting position for two pitch, so from first to third and then going back to first. So then you get this type of structures. You can see each yarn is shifting from first column to third column. So this is possible only by guide bar. So guide bar is free to move on the bed, um, left or right, uh, depending on what type of structures you can create. You can also switch up to four needles, five needles, six needles, depending on what type of loops you want to create. Um, sometimes uh, you can also uh, provide two guides or two yarns to the same needles. So once you provide two yarns to the same needles, naturally a different structures will come. I have uh, some of these structures with me. So where you can, you can easily see there are two loops in the same structure. So let me show you those loops. If you see some of these structures, so the video is not clear, but here you can see more number of loops are there because each needle is making two loops simultaneously in the same course. So here also if you see, um, if you carefully see, 
so one loop is made from the black yarn and the other other loop is made by the green yarn so two yarns are being cached at the same time so so in the same course so each needle is carrying two yarns simultaneously so this is what this structure is showing to you so each needle is carrying two yarns so once there is a two yarns the needle is making two loops at a time and you can get other complicated structures so each needles you can see there is a blue yarn and black yarn so every course there are two yarns are intersecting and they are making loops so here if you see each loops actually there are two yarns are being present so one is fed from the left side the other one is fed from the right side so the two guide bar is going in the same needle so this is how and from the figure also this should be clear to you uh, other structure is like obviously when you have two guide bars naturally you can play its movements so one guide bar will be doing one shift so here if you see the red yarn it is shifting from first column to second column and if you see the other white yarn it is shifting from first column to fourth column this is how it is doing so it is shifting one pitch and the other one is shifting four pitch so and you are getting this type of structures so although this structures looks very very complicated but it's again um, it's entirely depends on how many guides you are using and how those guides are moving in the fabric structure and how the loops are being played that's the only difference uh, in the warp knitting technologies sometimes you can also feed one yarn uh, where the guides are only giving yarn to that particular needles and other guide bar is switching so so this is also possible i have this particular fabric with me so where you can so this fabric which i am showing you so here you can see this uh, the the black one the guide bar is providing yarn to only one needle and the green one the guides are switching from one column to other column so this is how so this is how this structures will look so the schematic which i just showed you in the in the previous slide um is exactly the same so one guide bar is just providing uh, yarns to one needle and other guide bar which is carrying the green yarn they are switching from one column to other column so this is the structure so with this um, i hope you can imagine how um, this structure is so different how warp knitting is so different where they are used and in the next class i am going to go uh, in more deep on making the loop using warp knitting machine so i will show you the machine i will show you the guide i will show you the needles how they moves how the loops are being formed how the yarn is actually being supplied to the needle with the help of guides so how they are placed on the machines so that i will be covering in the next class so with this uh, thank you very much for the listening Thank you.